Hey, what's up YouTubers? Lee John Blackmore here at Super Easy Guitar. So this week I'm going to go through strumming mistakes that all beginners make, okay? Now, I've been teaching for a long time and I've sit in front of a lot of um, intermediate players, I sit in front of a lot of beginner players and complete beginner players. And all of you guys are all making similar mistakes. I'll go through a few of them and of course, you know, I can't cover every single mistake, but I'll cover a few of them and show you how to correct them and how to improve your strumming. And at the end of the lesson, I'll also do a strumming play along to help you actually improve. And you can add that into your five minute a day routine if you haven't checked the other video out, okay? So let's zoom in and have a closer look. So there's a lot of things I can cover in this lesson, but one of the first things I want to address is the guitar pick. Now, some of you won't even use a guitar pick. Um, you're probably still using your thumb or something like that, or and the fingers, which is fine. Let's just put the guitar pick down for a second. Now, when you are strumming with your thumb, really, you want to just use the side of it here, and I'm kind of using it as a, as a pick, you know? So like there was a pick in my hand, but it's just the tip of my thumb. And notice how I keep it straight, okay? But there's no tension in it. It's still relaxed, okay? And, you know, I'm just playing a C chord here. There's nothing, um, there's nothing flash going on over there. Now, if you want to do, if you wanted to do something more like that, I act as though I have a guitar pick in my hand. So what's going on here, when I'm doing a down strum, I'm using the back of my nail and then an upstrum, uh, kind of the thumbnail, but actually more of the, the thumb itself. And everything again is super relaxed. So I use the same technique. It's almost like I'm holding an invisible guitar pick. But in my opinion, if you're strumming and you want your sound to project, get hold of a guitar pick straight away you can hear the difference. Now, some of the biggest mistakes I see people doing is they use guitar picks that, let me just swap it over here, that are too thick. Now, this one is a Dunlop Series, XL Series 3, and it's like a pointy one, and I'm, I mainly use this if I'm kind of doing solo in and stuff like that, because it's a nice hard pick, I can I can really get the attack behind the strings. However, when it comes for strumming, it's probably a little bit too harsh, especially for a beginner. So what I tend to refer to is it's still a Dunlop pick. Now you don't have to use these, but this is just my preference. Now these are nylon, so they're not plastic, they're nylon, and this is a one mil, and it has a little bit of flexibility in it. I don't know if you can see that. It There's slight flex in it. And what that does, it just softens the tone. So if you're hitting the guitar really hard, you know, which a lot of beginners tend to hit too hard, it will take a lot of the impact out of the string and make it sound a bit nicer. So let me give you the two back to back. Okay, so the soft nylon one first. Well, it's more intermediate than soft, but the softer the better, I'd say, for beginners. So, and the hard one. Now it's, you know, there's only some slight nuances in there, whereas you can actually hear more of the string with the guitar, the hard pick. And it's a much broader tone, there's a, a, there's a stronger attack. And when I go with the softer pick, you hear less of the strings, you get a smoother tone, and it's a bit softer, a bit quieter. So that would be my preference to start off with. Now. If you go for something really thick, I've seen people using coins and all sorts of things, crazy stuff like that. I mean, each into their own, but it will not help your strumming. So start off with a decent pick. Now the grip, if I grip that pick too hard, you know, things tend to get a little bit stiff because I'm gripping hard, the, the bicep starts to engage and everything starts to stiffen up and suddenly, 
everything sounds a little bit robotic. When you start relaxing, notice where I've got my arm in here. I'm just resting on the guitar, and I know all guitars are different shapes and sizes, but find a comfortable position for your arm to rest because it's super, super important that you're relaxed when you do this stuff, okay? Now, if you grip too soft, obviously you're gonna drop that guitar pick. I still drop guitar picks to this day. It's just something that guitarists do from time to time, mainly when I've been playing for a long time and the fingers get a little bit sweaty. It's completely normal, okay? But you want a grip that isn't too hard, isn't too soft. You know, you don't want it flinging out or you don't want it, you know, you don't want to be gripping it too hard and it intensifying, okay? So have a nice relaxed grip. Now, you know, you might see me, I'm playing a little bit from my elbow here and a little bit from my wrist. Now I see people saying that, oh, you should only play strumming from your wrist. Well, there is some truth in that, absolutely. Most of the rhythmical stuff. If you wanna get quick like that, it has to come from the wrist. Now, bearing in mind, I'm always relaxed when I'm doing this stuff. However, there is always going to be a bit of movement in the elbow as well. But bear in mind, most of the movement is coming from the wrist, okay? Now, if I wasn't to move my elbow, which, you know, people have been told in the past when they come to me, oh, I shouldn't move my elbow, everything's from the wrist, and they, they do this. So the elbow isn't moving at all. We don't want that. We want something a bit more fluid. And I'm not going into the strings. I'm not playing. I'm not playing in too hard. I see people doing that a lot. And most of the, the cause normally behind that is the pick is actually flat into the string. Now that there is a technique called flat picking, but we want to try and avoid that for strumming. So if I go in flat, so if my finger is the string and my other finger is the guitar pick, you know, when it's flat like that, it really gets to gets into the string and pushes it in like that, right? So, you know, if I do a flat pick, so my, my pick is flat on the string and you can hear that's a really strong attack. So what we tend to do Instead of going straight in like that, we tend to just pull the pick down into an angle, okay? So if I'm going down this way, the pick is actually slightly angled. And that way it just rolls, it kind of rolls across those strings as opposed to getting jammed in them, okay? So we're angling the pick down, so it's not in, it's you know, the pick is pointing that way. And when we come up, sometimes I see people twisting their wrist, twisting the wrist down, twisting the wrist up. You don't want to do that, okay? You don't want this, you don't want to be twisting the wrist here. If we were doing, if we were doing flamenco or something, yeah, there is a little bit of wrist twisting going on, but with the guitar pick, the wrist does twist, but it isn't that extreme, okay? You want to try and avoid that, okay? So the wrist is kind of relaxed, and you know, I heard someone saying, um, like, you know, when you wash your hands and you like, you shake your hands, and that's kind of how you want the wrist to be. You want it to be relaxed, but not to the point where you're dropping the pick. So gripping not too hard, not too tight, and make sure your angle is down. So that's all good so far, you've got that. So when it comes to the upstroke, I'm not turning the wrist, I'm not pointing the pick in any other direction, I'm just bringing it up softly, and actually I'm not thinking about it, I'm just listening to how it sounds. So if you're doing, doing a downstroke, and it sounds kind of nice, but then your upstroke, it's sounding a bit rough, it means that you've probably not move the pick around so the pick is getting stuck in the strings. So even though I'm showing you this is kind of the angle, it's an extreme, that's an extreme angle because the angle is actually just really small. And 
you want to make it easy for the pick to glide across the strings. So that's just half of it, right? Down, down, up, up. Really softly. Now, most of the time, I see people attacking too hard and too fast. Now, the flip side of that, I see them going too slow, so they end up strumming like this. I know that's extreme, right? But you want to brush all the strings and you want to make sure you come down. This pretty thing here is called a scratch plate to protect my guitar. And what you can do, you can come down to the scratch plate. Do not strum out. Because I see some of this and also I see people stopping, tense in the arm up just past the strings. Remember, everything's relaxed, strum down to the scratch plate and then back up. And you see I'm just coming kind of above the sound hole here. It doesn't have to be too extreme. Just doing a nice steady down up. You can see there's a bit of elbow, but you can also see there's quite a bit of wrist. The faster I go, there's more wrist. Obviously, there's still movement in the elbow. So you don't just want to practice slow, otherwise that's not a strum, right? So you can also practice really fast. So you can sit there and, you know, make as much noise as you like. And it's always a good idea to count one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and let's start a bit slower. One and two and three and four and 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 now you see me sometimes I have a tendency to pull these fingers out and that's because I use them for different techniques, but you can keep them you can keep them tucked in there as well. Okay? Make sure it's fluid movement from the wrist and a little bit of elbow as well, okay? Do not twist the wrist like this when you're strumming. And always try and strum down to the ground, into the scratch plate. Okay, you don't want to make them too big. And you want to have a nice angle on the guitar pick. Don't point it down, obviously. That's not going to work flat on the string that's you know it's going to work but it's not going to sound too smooth so just a slight angle on it roll it over the strings and you can go slow and soft or slow and hard and fast and hard fast and slow then you can add in the down ups now, I said at the beginning of the lesson, I'd give you an example of probably a, a really common strumming pattern that I use in so many of my videos. And it goes like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now, that might seem really complex for a beginner, but let's break it down, okay? Down, down, up, up. Down, up. Down, down, up. Up, down, up, down, down, up. Up, down, up, down, down, up. Up, down, up. So what you want to avoid is this. Down, down, up, up, down, up. It's a good way of kind of visualizing it. Down, down, up, up, down, up. So it's kind of in three sections, down, down, up, up, down, up. But you want to play the whole thing as one section, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, because that's what rhythm is. And to create the rhythm, we have to have a balanced strumming pattern. OK, now a lot of people have problems grasping rhythms and they're always asking about 
rhythm patterns and things like that. Now, this down, down, up, up, down, up, if I was to tap it out here, da, 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 down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, da, 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 da. So that's your rhythm. Da, 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 da. And we just want to create that on the guitar. Da, 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 da. Now don't be tempted to do this. Da, 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 da. That would be all downstrokes. Now it would work. Down, down, da, 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 da. But it feels too robotic. So we want to round off the edges so it feels more comfortable. So my hand is always moving constant, like a pendulum. If you find you're doing this, down, down, up, up, and it stops, you know you're doing wrong because the hand has to constantly move. I always recommend just sitting on one chord that's comfortable, that's easy for you to do. And I choose E major because it doesn't matter which string you hit. You don't have to worry about missing strings or anything like that. So here we go. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now let's just watch what happens there. Super slow. Down, down, up, up down up so really my hand is constantly doing this but i'm just choosing to attack the strings down down up up down up down down up up down up down down up up down up down So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. Please don't forget, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to receive my weekly updates. Don't forget, head over to my website, I've got some free merchandise over there, I've got some tabs available, I've set up a PayPal donation button if you'd like to support me, any loose change would be massively appreciated. And if you're interested, I've got some music over on Spotify and all sorts of other things. Send me a message for any requests you have. I'm always listening, okay? Thank you so much as always, for your support, guys, I'll see you again the same time next week.